Hey everybody. I uh, hope y'all are having a good Tuesday. It's uh, Jessica Dupuis and um, I'm coming to you from the little country town of Dripping Springs outside of Austin uh, where we're having kind of a, a nice gray foggy day. I'm about to experience a little bit of a cold front I think which in Texas for some people may be cold but in general it's probably not that cold compared to people in the northwest or the northeast or anywhere north, to be honest. Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Thanks for joining. Um, so today we are actually, um, cause it's kind of like a take two. We had a little bit of some technical difficulty last week, but um, we're gonna try this again. I am gonna be joined by a friend of mine, Lisa Fain, who um, hopefully many of y'all have heard of, especially if you're from the Texas area. Um, Lisa is one of my favorite cookbook authors um, and kind of the, the person who's been cataloging Texas uh, cuisine in a really fun way for, gosh, I want to say, I'm going to let her answer this for real, but I think she's been doing it for about 10 years or so. Um, she originally started, you know, when the whole blog thing came on, she was in New York, but had grown up in um, Texas and decided to just start blogging about some of the recipes that she missed most about being at home. Um, to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure she grew up in San Antonio. Um, and so she started cataloging all of these recipes and over time, it's something that she developed quite a big following from. Uh, so then she decided to make a couple of cookbooks and these are books that, um, you know, I've ended up collecting over the years. Um, they've definitely been resources for me in my own kitchen. Um, they definitely, oh, here she is. Uh, she should be joining here just shortly. Um, so they, um, let's see here. She sent her. Oh, revved. Oh, who is this? Let's see. Let's try it. View request a homesick Texan. Um, she should be here in one second. As soon as the, you know, interwebs connect. Hey. Um, there she is. Yay. I can't hear you. Does that work okay for you? Oh, you oh, know no. what? Oh, gosh. More technical difficulties. Oh. I have my, hold on. <laughs> no problem. I'll just keep talking. I'm going to start showing it. Um, I actually am one of those cookbook um, collectors that takes all the book jackets off of the book. So I apologize. These are not very pretty. I still can't hear you. Oh, no. I totally can. Maybe try... Oh, yay. <laughs> awesome. It's good to see you too. I'm so glad you made it. Um, tell me where you're coming from. You're in Texas now, and but it's not in San Antonio where you're from. Where Can are you, you based now? Wait. Oh, no. Oh, that's a good idea. There okay, well, go. in the meantime, I am going to show off yay. some of your books. <laughs> Although... As I was saying, I, I take my book jackets off because I'm really hard on my cookbooks, especially the ones I use often. So this is one of yours. I do too. It looks nice, like, you know, library. -ish. Hang on. I still can't hear um, you. Hang on. I might have to get my headphones. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this one. So good. And then this one actually just came with its own lovely cover and is one of my favorites. Um, it's also a really one of the queso like one is one of my favorites to give books. to people because especially if they're not from Texas, it's kind of a fun, exactly. like, okay, yeah. look, the, we, before the we even talk about Tex-Mex, we just have it, to talk about cute. queso first <laughs> and almost apologize for yes. our obsession with it. <laughs> so, um, so Lisa, before yeah. you joined, I was kind of giving a pseudo background on you. Um, and just kind of wanted to fill people in for those. I mean, a lot of people already know who you are, which is pretty awesome. Um, but for those <laughs> that don't, like Homesick Texan Absolutely. started because you were literally homesick, right? <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, okay. That is true. Um, I'm a seventh generation Texan and I'm actually in Dallas now. I'm no longer homesick, but um, I was born in Dallas and my family's been in Dallas forever. Uh, but I actually grew up in Houston. So, you know, yeah, so mm -hmm. I kind of consider both home, but all my life I wanted to live 
in New York City. So when I was 25, I had the opportunity to move there. Um, and I ended up living there for 24 years. And when I was there, I mean, it was great. New York's fabulous. But one of the things I learned was you can't get good Texas food in New York. And so that had become my obsession from like 1995 until last year when I moved back here. And it, you know, food blogs came about in about 2005, but for the previous 10 years, I've been having, you know, New Yorker friends and friends from all over the world over for Texas food, introducing them to queso and chili and things like that. And, you know, it was just, it was always my obsession and I would, you know, go all over the three boroughs, you know, or all five boroughs in the tri-state area trying, you know, I'd hear about like a Mexican restaurant in New Jersey. So I'd take the path train to New yeah. Jersey to try yeah. it, you know, or I'd hear about barbecue in Connecticut. And so, you know, I'd take the train up to Connecticut. I was obsessed and you just really couldn't find good food. So that's why I started cooking. And then in 2005, when food blogs started, it just seemed like a natural That's so cool. But and so the it, blog, you know, a magazine you, editor, like the books are out. It was never like we'll a hear professional maybe ambition. that you're going to do another one or something. Hobby, you know? But, but um, it all kind of just But the blog off. also, you and, keep it up. Like you're putting new stuff up. In 2010, up. I, I got my first cookbook deal. And I quit my magazine editing job. And I've been writing full time ever since. So... <laughs> I do, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, I guess uh, Queso was my last book, and it came out in 2017. And then, you know, so you spend, you know how it goes, you spend about six months just promoting it. So it came out in the fall, and I was promoting it through, you know, like the spring. And then um, I, I, you know, I guess this was like May 2018, and I just, you know, I had an opportunity to spend a month in the summer in Texas, yeah. and I was going to be turning 50 a year later, and I was like, do I want to be 50 in New York, or do I want to be 50 in Texas? You know, it was just kind of like this crossroads, uh, you know, it kind of seemed like such a big milestone, you know, so um, I spent a month in Texas, and, you know, even through the years, like when I've been doing the blog, I come back to Texas like five times a year. And I, I would spend a month anyway, you know, with family and friends and things like that, just, you know, to research. I mean, when I did the queso book, for instance, I spent like three months just traveling around the oh. state of Texas, you know, eating queso. So, you know, I was, I was here a lot anyway, but I just wanted to, you know, make that final decision. And, and I enjoyed it very much. So I, you know, started making a plan. And then I moved back to Texas last March. And it... Actually, I thought, okay, this is going to be so easy. I'm a Texan. I grew up here, and it was crazy difficult. Like, I, I really, I was a terrible driver. I, I just, you know, New York and, and Dallas are, I mean, I'm actually in, I'm in town. So, I mean, there's office buildings around me, and I have Turtle Creek Park two blocks away. So, it, it feels yeah. urban for Dallas, but it's nothing like New York. So, I would just miss, you know, the tall buildings and the people everywhere. And I was, like, freaked out. Okay, where are the people? And so, it, it literally took me, like, from March to like January to get acclimated and then COVID happened. So it's just been this weird, you know, two years. So I still feel kind of like in transition. Yeah. So I'm just ready to get my vaccine and live life. But, you know, but so it was, it's been kind of a weird couple of years, but, um, but yeah, so I wasn't going to write a book because I didn't have that concentration. So I just focused on the blog, but that's actually been, I mean, the blog was always You're happy like, to you know, keep it up. Journey. I think it's cool because it, it keeps, it keeps the book. So I actually really enjoyed it. You know, kind of evergreen and relevant so too. Immediate. It's like, Oh, well, I don't, book, you know, you know, I have this book that I've been doing or this recipe from, from the book, but I wonder if she's freshened up something on enchiladas or something like that. You know, so it's a good thing. Speaking of enchiladas. So let's talk about, we're in the holidays. I'm not unhappy. Pretty much starting November 1, I don't know about you, but my family, like my extended family, we're talking grandparents, moms, dad, yeah. they're all saying, what do we get? What's the menu for Thanksgiving? And what's the menu for Christmas? And it always, we always yeah, think we're yeah. going to do something yeah. different, but it always comes back to like, it has to be Texas-y. And you know, there's always queso somewhere. Um, so what about you? Like how, what are some recipes that for you, signify that homesick Texan, right? So the Texas influence, <laughs> yes. um, but you, you, you see, yeah. seem to have them. Ooh, someone just said tamales. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes.
Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, I've been eating tamales, you know, for Christmas my whole entire yeah. life, like most Texans. Um, it's funny, though. Like, I didn't actually make tamales until I moved to New York. I had some friends. I had some oh friends from gosh. New Mexico. And, you know, <gasps> early on, even before I started the blog, she was like, Have, you know, you're a Texan. You know, you know how to make tamales. And I'm like, no, I know how to eat them. I mean, they literally are like, my top three food are tamales. But um, I'd never made them. And so we had a tamalada, and it just became a tradition to have a tamalada wow. in New York, which was super cool, you know. But anyway, but yeah, definitely tamales. Yeah, so definitely tamales. And um, now that I'm back in Texas, yeah. I have access to amazing tamales. I love tamales that you brought that up. I like, it's a, it yet, is something that I was actually always at our table. Someone's actually, always like, you know, who's bringing process, the tamales? But it's not hard. Um, and we it's always really, had our favorite spot. I mean, so I grew up in Lake Travis outside of Austin, and there's a place called Rosie's Tamale House, which is just a really I mean, it's very peaceful, I think, you know, just spreading the moss and you <laughs> so, know, the smells and everything. So yeah, I love so tamales, Rosie's always factored in. But when I was doing the book for um, on Texas regional cuisine for Southern Living, mm -hmm. it was the funniest story because I, I actually sourced my tamale recipe okay. from um, okay. uh, yes, Melissa Guerra yeah. down in South Texas. <laughs> I know Rosie. Love her. And she... I wanted someone authentic, like someone who authentically had a great recipe and she's the one. Um, so I submit the recipe to my editor and yes. you know, it makes like four dozen or something like that, right? It makes a lot because tamales make a lot. It's not a lot, no. Oh yeah, yeah, she, I love her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she pared it down. Uh -huh. She, Yeah, right, right. She yes. pared it down for me and my editor's like, yes. oh, well, you know, for our recipes, we usually do 10 to 12 people, 10 to 12 servings. So can you make this, you know, pare it down even but more? But four like, dozen isn't no, a lot, though. That, if you think about then we're not it. talking tamales I mean, not for anymore. tamales. Like that. I mean, usually it's hundreds. <laughs> it's only 48. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, yes, yes. To get you through January, really. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I knew you would appreciate that because there's no such thing as like a small tamale recipe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no. I mean, it's such a laborious process. You want to make enough anyway, so you can freeze them. So yeah. you can have them later on. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> they do. Yeah. yeah, they do. For me, yeah. it's the hard to pick just <laughs> one. That. I mean, I was even flavor, that, right? Like, so I want like a chicken like, or a pork, or I, I want the cheese. On yeah, own, jalapeno. Before, like, anyway, blog testing and well, stuff. okay, so it's small. I mean, so it's got lonely, that covered. So what else? At the same you time, like? you're still going to make a lot because you've mind. gone to all this effort. You want to have plenty, you know, because they freeze so well. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Fudge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, you know, I was, I'm actually was writing this morning. I'm about to post either later, probably later today. Um, my, I'm oh. more of a, I mean, you know, cookies are obviously a big deal. Yeah. You know, and candy. Yeah. We, my family loves to make candy, like pralines, divinity. Um, those yeah. are two of the most brittle. Yeah. Um, and then, I got a recipe from my grandma that's actually quite good. It's called complexion candy, and it's dates yes. and coconut and pecans, and that's yes. it. Because, you know, dates are so sugary yes. and so sticky. And so, and it's super sweet and deli and it's, like, amazing because there's no sugar in it. You know, so I like, this is my healthy candy, the complexion candy. Oh, yeah. Um, uh -huh. And all of these are on the blog. Um, but I'm actually more of a savory person. So, like, I love, like, the oh. cheese straws, yeah. the cheese balls, and then, of course, Chex Mix. I mean, you, you have to have Chex Mix. And so that was what I was updating. My grandma actually makes um, those seasoned oyster crackers with ranch I, dressing, which are like totally addictive. But I've never used the ranch dressing yeah. on my Chex yeah. Mix, which I, I mean, know this sounds like really simple, but you know, I was like, I can't have too many snacks cookies. this year. Yeah. I'm not going to see too did, many people. Did seven so layers ever two. factor into and your life? I like actually like whole, it better than just the ranch like on the oyster crackers. So that's kind of like guacamole and cream cheese. Like, will, and I don't even you know, know what, like black olives sometimes. These things, or like, and you have to hide it just because we can't stop eating it. So okay. those are my, you know, we have lots of snacks usually and cookies, of course. So yeah. Okay. 
black olives, refried beans, taco meat. Yeah, you know, my right. aunt makes it. And it's really, I had it like at the first time at my aunt's disease. Queso. And she. <laughs> okay, she's so speaking of peso, let's, let's just do it. Um, so, I love I it. I mean, your peso I book like, I mean, we, I don't has know why we don't, 50 I mean, recipes. So, so her house, definitely what do you do? What do you so do? It's part of my what Christmas, do you do? but it's not like my number one, which is weird because it should be. I'm up there because I love bean dip and I love all those flavors together. But I mean, they'll be queso, of course, too. Or always be queso. <laughs> Yes. What do I do? Um, well, I, I mean, I like to experiment. Yeah. And so I haven't decided what I'm going to do this year. I probably, I mean, at Christmas, you know, I, I get really into like the whole red and oh. green thing. Um, so I'll probably <laughs> do like a queso blanco and um, I'll probably include both green chilies yes. and then red yes. fresno chilies. And then I'll probably drizzle some like red salsa on top and some green salsa and just keep it simple. Um, but like I've done some crazy things that didn't quite yes, work out. Yes, like, I've never made it. Oh, that's a great idea. That was just disgusting. No, it was terrible. It wasn't good. I and it's weird because I love like cranberry cheese balls, but it was just yeah, weird. I've had that forever, <laughs> but I'd never thought about it making great. No, but actual I mean, jelly. Know, that, that, that I should do that. Be yeah. Something that you know, I was thinking about because I was talking to someone recently about pepper jelly. That's another. Do you make pepper jelly? Like on the block of yeah. oh, you never made it. Yeah. Well, you know, just that's another thing that will be on like the, you know, snack table, a block of cream cheese with pepper jelly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right. It's not hard. That and is so pretty good. In the case of okay. Book, I have so what about like the non, we talked about like non, I mean, we talked about green chili, like my grandmother, jam that so has we like have, pecans I've got a lot of influence in from so Houston, actually, same as you, I don't know if I'd make the ice cream and then um, San Antonio. My grandmother grew up in and, San you know, Antonio. And, on cold cream cheese and, um, you know, that was on and the, she, yeah, she so. was like a meticulous ble uh, beef enchilada maker. Like she was like, first we're going to make our sauce and then we're going to dip every little tortilla into mm -hmm. the sauce before we roll them in. I mean, she oh, okay. was like. Cool. And it, yeah. I mean, and I, I remember one time finally just doing the recipe with her because I wanted to like document it, you know, she's since passed away. Um, so oh, yeah. um, anyway, I, I, I think about beef enchiladas, but then like the, that would be like our Christmas Eve dinner. And then like the next day we'd go to my other family's house and it was like yeah. your classic roast, you know, rump roast and potatoes and all of that stuff so it's like two different yeah. kind of styles oh. um so what about you like what i mean did, did y'all stick did you kind of do you kind of think tex-mex all the time or are there some other favorites that uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah yeah It's funny that you make, I've Ooh. got, like, we have two different things happening, yeah. too. Um, for the past, I don't know, like, 15 years on my mom's side of the family, it's pure Tex-Mex, you know? And, uh, you know, we'll do, like, I mean, but it's a lot, you know? Like, we'll do a pot of chili. We'll do enchiladas. Actually, my uncle makes these squash cheese enchiladas, and they're amazing. Okay. And so we'll have that, of all things. Um, but, you know, cheese enchiladas and then, you know, like just guacamole. I'll do a red rice and a green rice, keeping up with the Christmas theme, um, you know, beans, um, probably some salad with like grapefruit and avocado or jicama. So that's kind of like my mom's side of the family. And my dad's side of the family, though, they're a lot more formal. And so they will do either kind of a replay yeah, of Thanksgiving. So they'll have like a, either a roasted or a smoked turkey and sides. But he also loves to do prime rib. So I always associate prime rib with my dad's side of the family. And that's right. Kind of like, you know, the main right. event along with you. I'm going to circle back to kind of what we know, started talking about today. at the beginning. Because I it's thought like this that. was really but, interesting. Yeah, um, you know, you're, you're in New always, York. I, you know, I've you're having a hard time. You're missing a lot of these flavors. I need to, like, and so you start, I mean, I prime wanting but, you know, to make some of these things for your friends. Which I think is such a, like, foundational thing about Texans in general is we're like, we're we're hospitable we're friendly these things but we also are like the way i can share my life with you mm -hmm. 
is to, is to cook for you these flavors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss so much. Um, and I, yeah. so when I was younger, I studied abroad in Ireland. And I lived in Dublin, and um, yes. I kept trying to explain to people what Tex-Mex was and um, and things like that. Of course, definitely not much much Tex-Mex going on Absolutely. in Dublin. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was yeah, like, no, I've Texas. got it. I'm going to, y'all come over. I'll make you some dinner. I was like 20. I didn't even know how to make a lot of these things, but I, I, I believe. <laughs> so I was like calling my mom. I'm like, uh. Um, and it was so hard because one avocados were like hard as rocks that, that you could not find a ripe av avocado to save your life. And then, um, I didn't know how to explain fajita meat to the butcher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there was no skirt steak. There was no, you exactly. Know, yeah. Yeah. No. So I ended <laughs> up with the most expensive possible fajita situation. I made it with tenderloin. Like. <laughs> work let's do that he's like okay lady um yeah so, uh, yeah anyway I, but at the same yeah, time like very, it, yeah. it meant something to be in a totally there. different place uh <laughs> totally in my case it was definitely foreign right to figure out how to get some of these flavors there um interestingly they oh, wow. sold old el paso <laughs> taco shells and yeah. tortillas so that <laughs> helped me a lot Um, I very much appreciate them for that, though, because otherwise it would have been just tough to try to get it all, you know, translated. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's so cool. So then, so now, yes, you know, you probably have yes. quite a base yes. in New York. Like now I that you're back in Texas, Spain, do you, find old El Paso. what things do you miss about <laughs> New York? Like maybe even cuisine there? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of just the place, I just miss the energy. You know, I just miss, you know, the constant bub of people and, um, you know, just oh. the, the way this, the buildings are. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a large city, but it can also feel very small town, you know, which is kind of like this little Sesame Street thing. But I mean, it's true. Like you get to know everyone in your building. You get to know everyone in your neighborhood. Um, I lived in a great place. I was like a block Good. from Whole Foods, a block from Trader Joe's, like three blocks from the Union Square Green Market. So I had all this like stuff, this great food, you know, within reach and other grocery stores too. But like I knew all the people at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and all the farmers at the green market, you know, cause I was there all the time. And you know, you just yeah. feel this sense of community. And I'm actually starting to get that now in Dallas, you know, be, you know, with my building and with my neighbors and, and, you know, the places where I go. And of course, you know, being from here, I had a huge support network coming into it. I mean, all my family's here. I have a lot yeah. of great friends. There was that, but it's just different, you know, cause you don't see them every right. single day like you would in New York. So I miss that a lot. Um, and of course, things have changed so much, though, because of COVID. I mean, like, you know, my, my friends and family that are still there, they say it's not like that anymore. So I, I'm, on the one hand, I'm very sad for New York, but I'm very thankful to be in Dallas, okay. you know, where I can, you know, go to a yard and be able to socially distance, you know, and have, you know, because that's really hard to do in a small apartment, um, you know. And so this has been the best place for me, and I'm very happy here. But so I miss that. But in terms of food, I really miss um, bagels. You know, I could walk a block and have just the best bagels. I love pizza. And actually, Dallas has really good pizza. But I just, which is good. But it's it's different. You know, I just miss like taking the train and just being able to get a slice. You know, here you have to buy the whole pie. And you know, that was just fun to see these explorations. Yeah. Um, but you know, the cool thing about like Texas now is that it has a great, I mean, you know, especially the large, you know, Austin, Houston. Um, that you miss Dallas, the most. I mean, yeah. That, that, that are hard to replicate or hard to get. Of, of people moving yeah. in from all over the world that you can find just about any cuisine. You know, I was afraid, you know, because I used to go to Queens and just, you know, see what I could find and eat. And, and, and But you can do yeah. that here too. I mean, you have to get in your car. So, you know, it's not um, as easy. So, but, um, I, I, I mean, no pressure. But are you working on pizza. any other books or can we do we yeah. see a big project coming from you anytime exactly or what's this exactly and that I you know and, and to be honest I haven't okay. tried to cook them yet um and perhaps that will be a next step but <laughs> not with 
within the next oh year. Um, you know, I've been, I mean, ever so, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure you're the same way. I mean, you do so much research, you're always just coming up with ideas. And like, I have two spreadsheets with just, I mean, like for queso, for instance, you know, when I went to my agent, I had a spreadsheet, I think it was like 300 queso recipes. And, and she was like, well, we can't do a book of 300 queso recipes. <laughs> you know? So I mean, it's just, I have this, I have a, I have a lot of material. Um, and, you know, and I always think of things and ways to, you know, structure it. And, and, and I love to research and I, you know, I haven't traveled at all this year, but I really do miss just traveling the state. You know, I, I really miss El Paso and just making that really long drive, El Paso to Marfa and Marfa to Laredo, you know, on down through the border and just circling the state, you know, I, even the panhandle, all of it, you know, and I, so that's something yeah. I want to do next year. Um, and that, you know, that was one of my goals when I move back to Texas is that I, I love that you more. say that and I just haven't yet but that will come but I mean I think you know when you get out there and you meet people right. you know I'll go to like church suppers and you know just talk to people I mean that's where <laughs> instead of just writing about Texas actually from, being just, you know, talking to Texas people, right like how is that in you know, the actual midst of but it. yeah I so. love that you say that like I so, mean Long story, about uh, in terms of those, yes those no. I mean, yeah, I have, like, influences and recipes right, right, right. coming out of the people like, you talk to at a community <laughs> church event or like, something like that because I don't know about you but when I have researched my cookbooks <laughs> I've gone to the old junior league cookbooks exactly. and the old yeah. Yeah. you know um <laughs> like uh not just junior league but community churches and um and my grandmother had so her mother or her aunt really which is who raised her yeah. in san antonio used to work for the mm -hmm. texaco company when it was based there and she has a cookbook that's called the oil dairy mm -hmm. secretary cookbook something like that i mean it's falling apart Absolutely. And right in i keep it in a plastic bat like completely protected but it has the craziest most horrible recipes you've ever thought of. Oh, but, yes. But also yeah. some really cool gems, you know? Um, and I love that part about our job. I don't know about <laughs> you, but like just sifting through some of that and how they would write. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, yes. That's, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I love to cook and I love to write, but I would have to say the research. No, is I like would love to. My favorite thing. I need Either to talking to people, going like out with day. people, traveling around, or, I mean, you know, I have, you know, access to, you know, all sorts of primary documents through the New York Public Library, Dallas Public Library, Houston Public Library. And when I can travel again, like, have you ever been to the Texas collection at yeah. Baylor in the Carroll Library? You would love it. Yeah, you would love it. Well, I, I spent a lot of time there at, at UTSA when I was writing Queso, but the, the, at Baylor, they have the largest collection of Texas cookbooks. And it's like, any, I mean, I'm sure your grandmother's cookbook is in their collection. I mean, just everything you could possibly imagine. And I would love to just like spend a week there. You know, I've spent a couple of days, but I mean, it's just endless. I mean, no, the, yeah. I, I just love, and you, and you see their names. Well, you know, and like, how they would write John recipes Stanton. too, right? Like when you what's and I go sit down you know, to write a it's format just, so for a recipe. Stories. And yeah, I mean, some of the recipes It's very are, like, different. And of course, different editors but, want know, different things, but yeah, also, you know, like, you know the word I, think, I can't think of an example at the top of my head where I've actually made it and I was like oh, yeah. this actually and for that for yeah, a lot of those so recipes fun. finding so you know see how things like well years. it's a, a scant of this literally or you know yeah. a can of such and such but you don't know what size right. can yeah or I don't know sure. yeah but there's yes. a standard sort of you know ingredients go this <laughs> way yeah yes um Right, because it could have been a wood-fired oven. You never know. Yeah, that. Yeah, so funny. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about because I, I hate to make these too or long. Or they'll tell you got, that um, number two can busy like, a busy day. But um, we yeah. so we talked I mean, about this a little bit, thing. and one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, <laughs> or they just say a hot include oven. you like, on <laughs> one of the cookbooks I did, the United States of the South, is we were I was yeah. researching this. I read your book, of course, but. Um, I had to kind of settle a score between Arkansas and Texas about, you know, the origins of queso. And um, 
I started to read about it and then I, it became clear to me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need to rewrite history here. You've done it. So I'm like, Lisa, can we talk, can we have you right. <laughs> help me with this? So tell me, you tell me. Did <laughs> Arkansas come up with Yes. Oh. That was crazy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that was actually why I wrote Queso was because, I mean, I mean, that was what I, well, it didn't, it wasn't why I wrote it, but that's what started me on this path to write Queso was because there was this guy from Little Rock <laughs> saying, Queso's from Arkansas. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> it can't be. It can't be. And then, but then like, you know, Dallas Morning News, all the snap. Right. I mean, I mean, the Southern, the SFA, the Dallas yeah. Morning News, uh, the Wall Street Journal, all these people were saying, did you know chili con queso is from Arkansas? And I was like, that can't be true. And I was just embarrassed that people didn't do the research. And so I was like, I was like, I wanted to know either way, but I didn't, it did not feel right that something called chili con queso would come from Little Rock, Arkansas. It just didn't seem right. <laughs> so I just started doing the well, research. Well, so, and but, it, just but it actually is right, because it's like something that we identify with as our own, as a Texan that, you know, thing. I mean, but it, it, the, just because the Mexico, story of you doing that research shows how crucial recipes are to the fabric of our own culture, right? Like that we understand where these things come from and that there might be a hiccup along the way. Like you mentioned Boston, because there was kind of this bechamel kind of recipe with cheese, you know, that kind of came. And I think that the thing that I thought was the most funny about this was that the legislative, like the Texas and Arkansas legislatures, didn't they do like a blind tasting or something? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was Ted Cruz, and I don't know if it was Tom Cotton or the other senator there, but yes, they did a yeah. they did a blind tasting. But see, the Arkansas guy cheated. Okay, here's the thing. He cheated. Arkansas cheese dip is basically the OG chili yeah. con queso. And I have a recipe. I have both. I have an Arkansas. I have their hot their cheese dip in my book. But I also have a chili powder San Antonio queso, which is actually the first queso that was published in Texas in the 1920s. And so before there was, you know, because green chilies were a seasonal thing. And before they were canned, you could not get them out of season. So the earliest chili con queso recipes used chili powder because it was dried and you could get it year round. So the story goes that queso did end up in Arkansas, but a Texan brought it there and he had worked for um, Farnsworth's, uh, the original Tex-Mex restaurants, actually they're called Mexican restaurants. And he had started in San Antonio and this guy, I can't remember his name, Blackie, I think or something. Right. I think his name was Blackie. I, anyway, I can't remember his name, but he had gone to uh, Longview and then he took this chain basically concept on his own to outside of Little Rock, a, a, a suburb of Little Rock. Right. And so it was pretty much all the same recipes. And he's the one that brought cheese dip and he called it cheese dip until recently. And it was, you know, American cheese with chili powder. So that's, if you get the OG Arkansas cheese dip, that's what you're going to get most of the time. Which, it's delicious. I mean, it's different, which is but it's not just... like what we would have for queso because there's no, you know, green chilies or tomatoes <laughs> or anything like that. But they also serve in Little Rock a lot of, white queso with green chilies but that's not that, what that's the first question asked is, that's what, what exactly the was submitted and then shared it should have gone through like a board of, of Ted Cruz, you know experts Texas, like yourself for instance or... which... <laughs> but he cheated I think right. <laughs> because, I, because he basically took a Texan recipe yeah exactly than, well I've tried I, one I at the, that's the, a um, queso, honest, the chain through Little Rock we we stopped there for the research and um part of the of the project and I just thought it was and they had a red drink there's a red they call it just they the called red drink and you're supposed you. to drink yeah, it with know. when yeah. you order the cheese dip. <laughs> I bet they called that um, guy. <laughs> it didn't go over well but no it's like it's like a version of big red that's almost yes it's like big yeah. red meets Hawaiian punch and it's somewhere mm -hmm. in there it's very sweet 
anyway, um, I'm glad I tried all the things. Um, I'm still oh, okay. Okay. happy to call queso our own. Is it alcohol? Um, What's in the drink? But all right, so I'm gonna leave like you with one last question, oh, which I is, see. you know, we talked about our savory and we're savory people. You mentioned candies, cookies, oh, like what's the one like final <laughs> bite to the holiday that's like your favorite final bite? And I'll share you with your mind. Ooh. Yes, for sure. Really? Mm -hmm. Mom's raspberry bars. Mom's raspberry bars. That, I mean, even though I say I have a savory tooth and I'm all tamales and Tex-Mex, she, she usually, I mean, she'll make them for special occasions, Ooh. but I associate it with Christmas. I mean, that's when that they come out great. and everybody, and that's another thing. Everybody's fighting, trying to get them. I mean, they're, it's a, like a, a buttery, Cake that's your favorite. Oh, that's perfect. Thick. So I, and I'm going to be on the chocolate side. Um, so from the same uh, and great grandmother that had the uh, Texaco oil dairy <laughs> secretary's it's cookbook. Just incredible. It's just oh my god! I don't know if you can yeah, find it. in Ireland, but I will show it to you. We'll have to meet somewhere between Dallas and Austin. I'll show it to you. But yeah, but she made a brownie. Yeah in the tiny, like it was like an eight inch square 10, ty and it had maybe five ingredients. It's the most simple brownie recipe I've ever <laughs> I encountered. I gotta find that book. <laughs> um, but it's the best brownie recipe. And it's yeah. like, once I made it, I'm like, yes, I, I will never yeah, do a awesome. box yeah. again. You know, like there's this whole, <laughs> and um, she added just like a pinch of cinnamon to it. And for some reason, that's kind of like my favorite holiday uh -huh. finish, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I am so glad we got to do this. I feel like, yeah. Um, I don't know about people that have tuned in, but for me, it's made yeah. me hungry and yeah. made me more excited for cooking. Oh, um, perfect. Yeah. which, you know, this year is just different. Like I, I, we're I not it. cooking for a big yeah. party, but I'm, I'm nice. still going to cook. <laughs> I know. Yay. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yes. well um so i'm gonna wish you a happy holidays and wish everyone else a happy holidays no. and uh let's oh, yeah. keep in touch I mean, let's do yeah, something like this again well it'd be I mean, fun I get some i mean i love to eat but for real i'm you're on i let's do it. let's I mean, let's do a road trip it, that would be, be, i mean it isn't the same though it is <laughs> no matter what, I, it'll still be good that would be awesome um Okay, well, we can hold every, everybody can hold us to that, but um, 2021, yeah. let's do it. Let's get vaccinated and go on a road trip. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, yeah, we'll Thanks, Tommy. Vaccinated. Um, <laughs> by the way, Tommy, I heard your comment on yes. Haritos. I wish yeah. it was Haritos. There was no oh, carbonation I'm to in. this I'm red in. drink that I saw. <laughs> it was like, all right. Uh, it, I don't even know how to explain be. it, but I'll, I'll, put, I'll post all it right. if I can find the picture. It was the brightest red I've ever seen. Anyway. Yes. I love um, yes. Thank you okay. so much. And cool. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.